okay, we talked about depression and suicide, but what are some other mental health um, situations or issues within children that we should be aware of or take notice of? So I think the commonest one and the most talked about one obviously is ADHD, mm -hmm. you know. I think that is kind of overly represented mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit being overdiagnosed because virtually every child who's not performing well in school, somebody or the other will say ADHD, mm -hmm. go get him checked out. But in my mind, I think the biggies that really get missed, number one is anxiety. Mm. Anxiety is very, very high in children and the way anxiety manifests varies so much depending on the child's age group. So a young child, three or four years old, might be showing separation anxiety and that's the quintessential mm -hmm. child who mom is dropping off to daycare and right. he is clinging to her legs, right. you know, and people are trying to extricate him from mom. Then later on they develop generalized anxiety where they just worry about anything and everything, everything. And then later comes the social anxiety, so where the child wants to fit in but finds it hard to fit in. So this is very, very mm -hmm. commonly missed and I really find it again very gratifying when I'm able to diagnose it and intervene and help the child. And the other thing to remember is that all of these conditions j tend to have a very heavy genetic penetration. That means depending upon how strong is the family history, whether one family member or two or more than two family members have a diagnosis of depression or anxiety, it really increases the likelihood of the child having a similar diagnosis. So it could be genetic sometimes. Of course. Actually, the most commonly uh, believed in model today is called the biopsychosocial model. So bio means the biology of the genetics. Psychology means each individual child's personality, depending upon whether they're resilient or they're not. And social, you know, whether the child has a good support system mm. in the past, was there ever any history of abuse, neglect, uh, bullying, or uh, molestation, or hardships in life, including food insecurity or economic hardships. So all of these factors come in together and give us the final diagnosis. Thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else you want to add about um mental health in children or anything else? I think uh, I call it the iceberg phenomenon where we're only seeing the tip of the oh, iceberg definitely. and there's so much more that's going on. And the more awareness there is amongst the parents and the school officials and the pediatricians, the more we're going to diagnose the kids. And the sooner we diagnose them, the sooner we start to treat them, the better are the outcomes. One more thing, before you came in, we discussed denial of depression. Can you just touch on that for parents? Because you said you've come across yourself about parents who've been in denial, complete denial, that their kids could even be depressed. Like they're too young, they have everything. Can you talk about that briefly? It's a very common phenomenon, Annika, and I think again it's multifactorial. One is the parent just doesn't want their child to be depressed, even though they're seeing it, they're in denial. Then there's the additional factor of stigma you know, even today, in today's society, mental health, unfortunately, does carry a big stigma attached to it. And there's this shyness and, you know, I wish my child didn't have it. Or a lot of times a parent has been through it all their life and they just wish that their child would not go through it. So right. they try and stay in denial. So that is big. And we are constantly trying to overcome that with better education and awareness for the parents and the grown-ups around the child. Thank you so much for joining us. Every time you come on, you bring really good points. You hit every point that I ask, so thank you so much for joining us. It's been us. a pleasure, Annika. Thank, thank you. you.